Welcome to the very last Key Fundamentals of Painting live workshop. Now today, this is the last day because it's also the last day to join How to Paint with Acrylics. And I know some of you who have been watching are already doing the orientation and it's great to have your questions and I'm really looking forward to working with you. Today, I posted the little question there is uh, about what's my story? What am I trying to achieve in this painting? And we're going to go through some of the things today that uh, make up the, the story and the message because you see all of that? Well, mostly. The top says key fundamentals of painting. There we are. <laughs> now, <laughs> I tried to bring the camera a little bit closer than yesterday because I'll do a few more uh, detail-y things. <laughs> so, remember in key fundamentals in painting, we had the three uh, key video areas, um, composition, light, and color. And the message, although everything impacts it, uh, the message is what I talked about when I talked to you about composition, because we looked at it in a little bit of a different way. So with composition, I'll just get our cue out of the way. We're saying when we look at this composition, or I'm saying, um, I want you to be curious about gum leaves. So um i need to therefore well, my objective is to make them the focus so what am i doing to tell this story and my message so as if i was a photographer and uh tara and sarah have asked me if i've used a photo i'll show you the photo um i tend to walk in national parks or places where you can't pick the leaves the leaves I have are, are, um, are from here, are from a, a, a florist. Um, but I need to, and all of us as artists, if we paint things from nature, we need to be really familiar with them. So we need to, uh, I take photos all the time of gum tips and the way they're naturally arranged. But also I'm very conscious of how those leaves feel, those thick waxy leaves. And I just love the fact that they always have these really defined edges and they usually have, I don't know if you can see, I've started just putting a little bit for you in case I was talking about it, the pink. They have little pink edges and their new leaves will be the light green. I'm going to pop some new leaves in here or they'll be pink. And um, they've all got, I'm going to put in more pink because also this is a gum tree that has uh, pink stems. Um, so where's the photo? Here. It's not a very good photo. Uh, there. <laughs> Sorry, you can see this really tests me, the backwards thing. Uh, <laughs> so. It's not much of a photo. You can effectively just see light hitting some leaves. So that's all I wanted to know was um, the reference can act in a fa fairly general way for me. And um, when I got it out today to have a closer look, I thought to myself, yeah, okay, I, I need um, a lighter light. So whenever you uh, have another look or do things like turn it, your painting upside down or look at things more objectively, then you, you see things, they pop out at you more rather than when you're looking, looking and beaming in. So in uh, How to Paint with Acrylics, uh, we are looking at a specific process of building our painting, getting on that first pass of colour after the previous steps and uh, doing all of that before we even begin to think about detail. And we're doing that so that in our brain, in our mind, we've already thought through a lot of the issues a number of times 
before we get to detail. Because what can happen is if you start diving down into detail, uh, let's say, you know, if you pick one area and you do the detail here, when you pull back from it, if you haven't taken everything into account, you may find the color has gone right off in that area. <laughs> You've drilled down and that's not matching. So part of, you know, what am I doing for my message? I am making the background greens less intense. I am making the background lines less definite. And then when I come forward to my leaves that are in a purer color or a different kind of color, I'm using these uh, sharp edges to help you see, to help the eye read what's in front and the sharp edges are what the eye reads as being closer and further away is going to be fuzzy. So as a photographer, we can get our lenses to create these kinds of shifts. And there's a little bit of that in my photo. It's just a bit more messy in the background. But as a painter, if we're cognizant of what those tools are, then it becomes easier because we have some rules of thumb to work with. And once we have those, we can just enjoy engaging and getting lost with the painting uh, in a good way. <laughs> uh, and for me, I just, I really, I fall in love with the leaves or the flowers that I'm painting. I just am able to really engage with that process, even if it's for a short time. Because again, we work on how to build up what you're painting so that you can stop have a rest, go do something else, put some washing on the line, pick up kids, uh, write a memo, uh, deal with the rest of life. So that's very important to me to um, pass on this way of painting that helps you stay engaged with the painting, but get on with the rest of life. Because I think that's a really realistic way to do it. And as I said to you, so often I'll, I'll just think to myself, oh no, I'll, I'll just do one more leaf before I stop. I, it's all about small goals. It's all about breaking things down into steps. So I encourage you to uh, look more at that in your own work. Now, please, if you're there, say hello. Tell me who's there. Tell me if you've enjoyed the process that we've been going through over the last two weeks. Now let's have a look. I think what I'll do as I said is look at some of this pink gum. Hmm. Things have been drying while I turned my back. Mostly though, I have actually, like the red I'm using now, I put out on Monday or whenever we started. So um, uh, it, it's winter, so things are here, so things are drying a bit more slowly, definitely, than they would in the summer. But it's just interesting to know that with acrylics, without even using a retarder medium, uh, just by putting, a, well, I use these little plates and put a lid on them. Um, right now it's not being very effective at keeping the, uh, the medium in the plate. <laughs> okay, what am I doing? I'm having a look at a little bit of pink. The darker part of the pink of my stems of my gum leaf, my gum tree, and uh, even my stem here has got quite a bit of shadow falling over it to make it more interesting. So I'll add a bit more white, this is my messy palette, to get the lighter part.
And I think I said to you, I went to the Australian Impressionist exhibition um, and I've got a video about it for you. And I use a lot of this pink, it's sort of a, I'm using cad red, but it's got a little bit of yellow. And you know also that I'm really into uh, getting to know your paints and using a limited palette. And I, um, I give you lessons on how to do that. Why? Because it reduces the number of decisions you have to make. See past me there. Okay, maybe I'll move over here a bit. We've actually got a, a complex little area there. Quite a few pink bits of gum leaf, gum tree. That bit's a bit darker. Some shadow. This is the lightest part. And it's just catching our attention. And I'll just use a little bit of that light pink while I've got it. Can you see that begin to pop? I see the grand finale end result. Looks amazing already. Diane, that's lovely. It won't be finished today though. <laughs> but I'm trying hard. <laughs> what I'm trying to show you today, Diane, is really the difference a detail makes. And I won't be able to show you all of them, but let's let me find a nice leaf edge for you let me see if you can see this one tell me if you can see these details as i put them on The reason I'm just doing a little bit of the detail, and you'll see I've still really got quite a big fat brush, is just to show you how, because I can't finish everything, but I want to, and, and what I've got here is really the general um, uh, first pass of colour. I will uh, finish it in How to Paint Acrylics to show that group. But we just haven't got that far. But what I want you to see, as I just put on these details, is the way they make things pop. Okay? 
So remember, I, I want you as artists to be feeling good all the time. I want you to never be losing confidence. This is, this is the trick that we're trying to, um, it's why we look at how the brain works. We know this is gonna happen. Therefore, we anticipate how to build a process where we don't lose confidence. And so I'm wanting you to know that when you're doing the first pass of color, yeah, it's not going to tell the whole story yet because it's not until you get to further down the process where you start hitting some of the important aspects of detail, highlight, that it all starts to make sense. So we're not, not you know, fully at the finish part, but I'm wanting to put some in so you see them. Oh, thanks, Nick. You can see the details popping. Yes, that's what we want. And oddly enough, they're pink. <laughs> a little bit of pink tree. And and you know, I'm, I'm not doing a whole line in that tree because the sun hits it at different points through the shadow. And what's another one, good one too? This is very, um, very in highlight here. See that a bit? Yeah, so because it's a lovely thick waxy leaf and therefore when the sun hits it, it's fairly, oops, solid. <laughs> it's really quite challenging, the camera movement thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I'm just going to pop down. Let's, let's go to this lovely long leaf here. I'll be out of shot, but it's the painting you want to see. Okay, so I haven't got the shape quite right. And it's just the tip that really gets the sunlight just around the corner of the tip okay you see that so we now just got the sun into the painting down here in this corner now let me get a bit of sun there yep and oops there so This one's a bit more pink. There's a bit more sun there. And then... This one. And with this one, even though this leaf, this one here, is largely in shadow, the sun is uh, not directly hitting it, but it is hitting its edge.
see I'm wobbling that a bit. I don't want it to perfect. It's not really how it does it. And this really has an edge here. Now my little bright yellow and blue. Any questions? My little um, new growth Okay, it's going to Can you see that there? Let's get a bit uh, Maybe a bit of shadow behind it will help. There's one underneath, and then there's that one. So just that little new growth, because the gum leaf tips are always a bit different. So, okay, let me see what you see. A little bit yeah okay I think we're starting to see it uh, pop forward I've actually this leaf ends is going to end up being pink um, I'm going to work on the detail of filling this area in which has got quite a bit of crisscross of of the lovely little stamens for those leaves and that will take um, I'd have to stand in front of it. <laughs> so when I'm doing detail, I don't know about with you, um, detail is easier for me sitting down, uh, it might be flat on the table, but I really do have to get in front of it. <laughs> and uh, if you haven't seen uh, on my YouTube channel, I uh, uh, paint, uh, there's lots and lots of my paintings in time lapse. So, um, and the beauty of that is it, it's only interesting in a time lapse when you do this first big part. And so after that, you can, you know, switch it off because you need to get in front of things. So I, in there, I, I need to actually be in front of it because I'm painting everything at funny angles. So um, what questions do you have about uh, the message I'm trying to create uh, how to paint with acrylics um, or just tell me if you've enjoyed uh, uh, being together for key fundamentals of painting I certainly I've enjoyed painting with you all each day and I know there's many people who watch it later who can't come live at lunchtime in Melbourne Australia or East Coast time uh, but I really appreciate those who do and make that effort and I hope uh, that you learned something and have just enjoyed seeing how really only I haven't done that much more outside the little 20 minutes or half hours that we've had. But once you start uh, following a process, then it's all easier because, you know, in, the, in this aspect, I have a lot more to think about than I would if I was just painting by myself. But again, because I've got a step-by-step -step process then that allows me to um, you know bring in a bit more complexity and not lose it all together <laughs> so uh, I just want to thank you and um, uh, you will see the post of the finished painting Diane <laughs> um, but I'm not going to get it finished today but I hope you can understand what it is I'm trying to do. I want, when we talked about composition and, and uh, my idea of the um, three things you'd be trying to do, whether you're trying to get people to see something differently, whether you're expressing an emotion or you're taking people on a journey. 
think about that in your own work and um, I can't tell you how many times I hear artists say oh I don't know what to paint next I don't know what to do and of course when you paint from nature you it changes all the time the uh, something's in bloom something's uh, changing and autumn leaves or there's always something to engage with and it does change how you engage with the world when you look outside when you go for a walk and it just gives you purpose so I really encourage you to paint from nature. If you can't join us in How to Paint Acrylics, I'm, I'm really glad you joined us here. What were the colors you used? So, good question. Thanks, Diane. I use, da, 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 da. I use the Windsor and Newton paints. And you'll hear me say this over and over that I use them because they stay the same wet or dry and so many other paints I've tried don't so I come back the next day going did I do that am I going mad you know <laughs> and I did it's just that it dried a different color so it makes a big difference to me so um you know people are in the cause too asking me right now can I use this cheaper one can I use that and yes you can you you, you won't get the same kind of consistency though so I use, this is my gum leaf combo. It's the Windsor & Newton Ultramarine Blue, the Cad Yellow Medium. Oh, I can show you on my chart. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Ultramarine Blue, the Cad Yellow Medium, and a bit of white and black. And that gives me, see these ones here? See these ones here? <laughs> um, that's my gum leaf combo. And as soon as you move over this chart, see these greens here? These are brighter. And I call this more uh, the north of Australia. This is, for me, this is the... Um, rainforest and over here is the gum leaves all these and I love that word glaucous colors this these really um, blues silvery blues and it's what we have so much of in the leaves you can see a little bit here again um, you know it's hard for the camera to pick everything up but oh, I've got a little arrangement here Dun, 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 dun. let the uh, camera focus what can I show you see how it's a silver grey blue and of course that's the beauty of these leaves is is uh, it's different in every aspect so it just changes all the time if if uh, if someone said I could only ever paint one you know plant for the rest of my life I'd, I'd be okay with that because they change so much <laughs> so uh, you can see against my skin there that that uh, how it's similar to what I'm creating in the painting so that's my gum leaf combo it smells nice um, and because I work with that limited number of paints and I become familiar with them your your paints are your friends and you need to uh, do stuff with them and you need to keep records and you need to see how they work and then you can just refer to that and honestly I made those little charts and I just refer to them uh, year in year out of of looking at them I'm somebody who only came to painting uh, in my 50s and, and so I just worked all this stuff out or I looked at what the real people who are really good at stuff do and that's what I want to uh, share with you because my way of learning is I want to find uh, the best way to get uh, and shortest path to a good result <laughs> so that's what I'm about and um, and I'm so glad you could be here grateful for knowledge Oh, it's lovely that you've enjoyed watching me paint. Thanks, Nick. 
and um, yeah, you will see a post of it next week of what happened and uh, in How to Paint with Acrylics, I'll finish off a bit more for you. Thank you so much for joining me and I'm so glad and grateful that you enjoyed the program and my teaching. And if you can join How to Paint Acrylics Do or share the little ad with your friends.